With a year in the bag for Formula 1's slightly more simplified aero formula, the rules remained relatively static for the 2020 season. Before the coronavirus pandemic took F1's best laid plans and cast them aside with little regard for their content, the plan was for 2020 to be the final season run to the current formula before transitioning to the overhauled ground effect aero concept for 2021. However, owing to the mandatory lockdowns and cost concerns, those plans were shuffled back a year, meaning that 2020's cars will remain in use for another year and give the teams a reason to continue their development. A few trends emerged throughout 2020, notably the willingness of a greater range of teams to adopt the thinner, tapered noses used to great effect by Mercedes to reduce the aero blockage to the floor, along with a greater effort to shrink wrap the bodywork. Compared to the start of the hybrid era where bodywork was significantly more bulky amid early cooling concerns for the early iterations of the current power unit formula, today's cars are considerably more svelte. There's been further development in the high yield areas of the cars too. Diffusers and barge boards look increasingly complex and intricate as the engineers seek to milk every single drop of performance from the floor area, while the regulations governing the new breed of front wings set out in 2019's rules continue to be exploited in increasingly creative ways. Although there will be a few tweaks to 2021's rules, most notably around the floor and diffuser area in a bid to trim away the downforce, the majority of 2020's innovations will be carried forward for another year. Except, of course, one particularly controversial piece of kit enclosed within this year's runaway title winner. This may be the last time that we talk about Mercedes' dual-axis steering system in the context of a contemporary season. The push-and-pull toe-changing device used by Mercedes drivers to introduce more heat into the front tyres on a warm-up lap took the column inches for its early season controversy. Although designed with full transparency granted to the FIA, Red Bull launched an official protest against DAS with the claim that no suspension changes could be made to the car while in motion. Mercedes countered that it was part of the steering system which the FIA upheld, although agreed that design would be banned at the end of the season to quell any possible arms race. Prior to the 2020 season's delay, Mercedes was in a spot of bother with its power unit and had to work around factory shutdowns to find some extra reliability. Arguably, Melbourne's cancellation helped the team out of a spot of bother and gave it time to install a fix. The team had also planned a set of updates for the aborted Dutch Grand Prix, and so instead brought them to the eventual season opener at the Red Bull Ring. This was wrapped within its new black paint scheme in the face of the team's new efforts to improve the overall diversity within its workforce, and make a stand against racism in response to numerous unsettling global events, including the murder of George Floyd at the hands of police during the zenith of the pandemic. Mercedes had brought a new rear wing end plate to Austria in a bid to bolster its already impressive package, shuffling the strakes further forward to create a more gradual transition to bring airflow outwards. In doing that, the car's diffuser has a bigger effective volume as the low pressure zone behind the car, which increases the suction of the floor, is widened. The team also experimented with a single wing mounting strut in the earlier parts of the season. In modern F1, all teams currently opt for the double swan neck rear wing mounts to keep the suction surface of the main plane free developing a much cleaner low-pressure zone underneath to reduce the effect on downforce. However, this increases the frontal area of the car, and to reduce this for the lower drag circuits where top speed is key, Mercedes opted for a single mounting, incorporated with the DRS housing, to trim some of the drag away. Having run its W11 in a relatively raw form in the opening six races, Mercedes added a number of updates for the Belgian Grand Prix to extend its performance advantage and in good time too, as the team was predicted to lose out in qualifying as a legacy of the engine mode restrictions that came into play for Monza. On top of the chassis bulkhead, Mercedes had reprofiled its fins to improve their interface with the fins on the sides of the chassis. The tips trailed further back, not dissimilar to those on the Red Bull RB16, which will presumably create a tighter tip vortex that can then drop down to the bargeboard area. The team also switched up its bargeboard package, removing one of the horizontal planes mounted to the side pod vane to free up space underneath to add a different pair of floor mounted elements. There were also fins added to the floor to assist with the outward transit of airflow, positioned just ahead of the rear tyre to improve the effect of the slots on the edge of the floor. Mercedes ended work on its W11 rather early, and team principal Toto Wolff mentioned during the Eiffel Grand Prix weekend that the team had finished its updates a long time ago, and diverted its attention to 2021. And that is somewhat ominous. In the hands of Max Verstappen, Red Bull's RB16 was always amid the frontrunners, but that disguises the skittishness that the Dutchman could handle, while Alex Albon struggled to tame the bucking Bronco. One visible change to the Red Bull car this year was introducing a thinner nose, tapering in at the bulkhead at the mounting points to fit the new geometry. 
The team also played with its front suspension, opting for a multi-link lower wishbone and creating a suspension element that fit within the chassis as a continuous element. The multi-link upper wishbone used last year was gone from the Red Bull, but found its way into 2020's Alpha Tauri. While retaining the snorkel-like crash structure at the front, it also added a range of openings around it to open up the underside of the nose to a greater supply of clean airflow, increasing the efficiency of the floor. The team attempted to make a change to its nose for its home race at Austria. The new nose moves the mounting pylons to the front wing closer together and now fit on the underside, meaning the team had more freedom to reshape the array of nostrils, presumably to get the flow paths of the air more to the designer's taste. But for some reason, Red Bull reverted to the default version, Verstappen ran the redefined nose during the first race but it ended up on the cutting room floor thereafter. Its rear wing end plate update brought in for the steering Grand Prix enjoyed greater longevity. It featured curved slots in the end plate overhang, which assists the airflow expansion experienced at the rear to draw more performance from the diffuser and rear wing. Those slots also help to condition any errant turbulence from the tyres, cleaning it up and ensuring that no unpredictable flow structures enter that expansion space. Red Bull had been willing throughout the season to experiment with new parts in its bid to try and close the gaping chasm it has between itself and Mercedes. The team's new for Silverstone rear wing certainly helped Max Verstappen cement his place between the Mercedes drivers and the rest of the field during the British Grand Prix, and ultimately helped him to overhaul Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas for victory in the 70th anniversary Grand Prix, also at Silverstone. For Silverstone, the team turned up the outboard ends of the rear wing main plane to slash the drag produced. Now this is quite a common approach and uses the central section to produce the majority of downforce while removing a little bit of downforce from the less efficient parts of the wing to remove some of the car's drag penalty. The team briefly ditched the aforementioned louvered end plates it used in the previous two races, and by trimming out the rear of the car was not subject to the same degree of tyre wear that the two Mercedes cars were, meaning that the Slappen could pressurise the pair and eventually claim the win. Having dropped its nose updates, Red Bull instead drew attention to the front wing. The team added four tiny holes to the front wing to boost the front end performance, where the two tiny outlets were set into the trailing edge of each front wing end plate. This was fed by a large slot within the underside of the wing. This draws air through the construction of the wing and releases it at the point in which air is being turned around the front of the wheel. By transferring the outlet from a larger inlet underneath to a smaller outlet, this will accelerate the air coming out, and in response the fluid pressure within will drop. This seems to be a way of strengthening the outflow release from the top corner of the end plate, which will further assist the outwashing characteristic that the curvature of the end plates provides. Yet again, Red Bull started the season well behind Mercedes and only caught up through a greater development swing. The team will hope to stop that trend next year when everyone continues with what are essentially the same cars. But what about the rest of the field? Stay tuned for part 2 where we'll delve into the midfield battle and the updates they brought in the battle for third in the championship. So feel free to subscribe and hit the notifications bell to catch our second 2020 technical roundup.